What is up boys and girls, it's Seb here with Modify Up. Sorry for such a long break in between videos, but I injured my back so I had to stay out of the garage. But I'm all good now, we're going to jump straight back in and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. Now you don't need any CAD files, you don't need a laser cutter, we're going to do this the old school way. Drill press, tap and dies, and some good old elbow grease. After much deliberation, I finally settled on a gearbox for Project Wonder. I had a few criteria I wanted to check off before pulling the trigger and laying down some coin before I would know if the damn thing would actually fit. One, it had to be of Toyota Heritage. Two, it had to have readily available upgrade parts to handle the power and drivetrain shock I'll be giving it. Three, it had to be a remote shift so that I could place the shifter in any position. And four, it had to have a reverse mount starter motor, since there's no recess in the block for a starter motor in the 2AZ. Enter the TL70 6-speed ASIN gearbox. These transmissions are found in the GT86 slash BRZ and are based on the AZ6 transmission, commonly found in S15s, RX8s, Altezas and more. The TL70, although based on an existing AZ6 design, has had an almost complete makeover with wider gears, thicker circlips and grooves with three-piece synchros first to third and single bork rings for fourth to sixth. Being that these cars are still in the honeymoon tuning period, there are so many options to upgrade this box from PAR gear sets to oversized input shafts and for the most hardcore, Quaif sequential straight cut dog boxes. With all these options, why would anyone bother trying to fit an R154 into an AE86? Check this out guys, my back is feeling good, my new gearbox is here, check this out. The most important part of this gearbox is the starter motor placement. The starter comes in from the transmission side, which is all too important with the 2AZ. If I was to say fit a W58 gearbox, I would literally have to remove a large chunk of block skirt webbing, which in turn would create a weak point near number 4. There are some points of concern here with the physical size of the bell housing, which I won't address in this video. We'll take a look at the fitting problems and solutions once the engine and gearbox are mounted in the car. So for now, let's take a look at how we can make an adapter plate to mate the TL70 to the 2AZ engine. The process and considerations are the same for making an any gearbox adapter plate, no matter what the engine and transmission combination is. Now that we have the gearbox and spare block, we can go ahead and start fabbing up the plate. But before we do, let's go through some equipment needed. You will need these following essential items. A drill press, some drill bits, a center drill bit, tap and die set, transfer punch set, a jigsaw, and everything else you should have in your garage already. If you don't have a spare block, I pray for your soul. This would be exponentially more difficult to do while still in the car. Just a note before we start, I'm going to do this straight onto the plate, but note before I made a wooden template so I could understand what the pain points would be. So follow along and build one out of wood first before you destroy a $200 plate of 6061 aluminium. So let's start on the plate here. We're measuring in at 450 millimeters by 450 millimeters by 16 millimeters thick in, as I said, 6061 aircraft grade aluminum. You want to mark the center with a horizontal line and a vertical line. The vertical line will match up to the center line of the gearbox and shifter. Once that's marked out, go ahead and drill the hole in the center to the same size as your input shaft. This is the most difficult and critical part of the whole plate as everything will be centered off this first hole. And it's the only hole that you have to do by hand unless your drill press is big enough to fit the plate in. Next, I'm going to knock out the locating dowels on the gearbox. 
These dowels take the radial load or rotational force between the gearbox and the engine, and not the bolts, so it's crucial to get these correct. With the dowels removed, this will allow us to use the transfer punches through the locating holes to accurately mark out the dowel points on the plate. So now that we've got our center hole drilled, we're gonna put the plate on top of here with the hole sitting on top of the input shaft. Now, as you can see, the input shaft has a little bit of movement. So this is gonna be really critical for us to get this right. Here's a neat little trick that I learned in Formula Ford. When you have a shaft sticking like, out like this, but it's got a sleeve around it, all you need to do is make a little collar and that will hold it completely centered. So you slide that collar in No more play, and the shaft is completely centered inside that sleeve. Once you have the dowels out, you can go ahead and sit the gearbox face down on the plate with the input shaft through the center hole. You may need to space up the gearbox if the input shaft sits proud of the bell housing. Now, mark out the dowels on the plate using the transfer punches. Off we go to the drill press to drill out the dowel holes on the plate. Always start with your center drill, then move up through the sizes to reach your finished diameter. And be sure to consult a drill speed chart so that you can set the drill press to the correct RPM for whatever size your hole is and the type of material you're working with. So now I'm going to show you how to figure out the correct engine angle. The 2AZ sits on a pretty funky angle, so we need to figure out exactly which way it sits and how that's going to mate up to the gearbox. Now this is going to work for pretty much any engine conversion you do. K-series engines have a pretty funky slant as well, a lot of the F20Cs, um, basically anything that's not meant to be in that car is going to have a different angle to factory. So it's pretty simple, we just need our we need our spirit level. We're gonna sit him across the bottom of the sump. And we're gonna turn that until we can get that completely level. Just need to check that. That's pretty good, for the purposes of what we're doing anyway. So now that the sump is level, we know that the pickup is sitting correctly in the middle of the sump. We can pull off our rocket cover and we need to go to a flat part of the head. And then from here, we can figure out what angle we need to be on. So if you get this anywhere flat on the head, give yourself enough room. All right, so that's sitting at about 11, 12 degrees. We can get the exact measurement if we transcribe that over to a protractor. So now we know that we're sitting at 12 degrees. We can come over to our block, find our center line through the block. You can do that by sitting your square, your right, right angled square on the flat part of the block. I'll just do this for illustrative purposes. We'll just say that that is center. We'll mark that there. And then we can come over with your protractor You measure 12 degrees and that will come over to around about there. Now in the gearbox, we've marked center. 
and that's worked out from the two dowels straight through the middle of the input shaft and a 90 degree angle up that center there that will line up with our center line on the plate and then the plate we're going to rotate 12 degrees and that will get our 2AZ on the right angle with our gearbox pointing straight up. Now we know what the engine angle will be relative to the gearbox, we can go ahead and mark up the dowels on the engine side of the plate. You want to find center with a spigot bush or whatever you have that locates in the crank and run a shaft out through the center of the plate. Find the center line of the plate and rotate it to reach the required engine angle once centered on the shaft. Note that the plate will definitely not sit up flush against the block, as a crank will sit higher than the block in most cases. So we need to mark out the dowel points, then cut out the center of the plate before we can get it to sit flush. Now, if you're lucky, the dowels on the engine will run all the way through the block, in which case you can use the same technique of using the transfer punches from behind to mark out the dowels. If you're unlucky and the dowels only go halfway into the block, then you'll need to make your own transfer punches the same diameter as the dowels and ground down to a point. Then you can remove the dowels in the block, knock these new punches in place, then lower the plates onto the points and tap the plate. That way you can still mark out the center points of the dowels in a blind hole. Go ahead and drill these out. You can drill these out all the way through, but I drilled mine to a depth of 10 millimeter for a cleaner looking plate. Now we can start to remove the inside of the plate so we can confirm our measurements. If you haven't marked out the center, you can just mark out a big circle big enough to house all of the bolts. You can drill a hole on top of the circle and this will be the starting point for the jigsaw. Now let me tell you, you better have some patience because cutting 6061 with a jigsaw is not the fastest nor easiest thing to do. Use lots of lube and cycle through your blades often. Don't worry about the rough finish the blades leave because we'll be cutting this back with a flap wheel to clean it up afterwards. Now that you have the center of the plate cut out, we can mate the gearbox to the back of the engine for the first time to check our input shaft alignment. Sit the plate on the engine and the gearbox on the plate, then peer inside to see how well you lined up the dowels. Now of course this is essentially an eyeball job, but if you are extremely careful in your measurements and drilling, your input shaft alignment will be spot on. Of course once the plate is finished and we have the gearbox apart, we'll run a dial indicator around the input shaft bearing journal in the bell housing to check for 100% alignment. And if we're out a few thou, we can order some offset dowels just so that we can line up the input shaft to the thousandth. Once you're happy that you haven't screwed up majorly, and you can't see any obvious misalignment issues, then it's time to cut out the outer part of the plate. I cheated here and traced around my wooden template, but the process is very simple. Just trace the outline of the gearbox onto the plate, then use a parallel clamp with a texture on one end to trace onto the same side of the plate where you have your gearbox template drawn onto. Then the other side of the parallel clamp you use to trace the block. Then you can compare both templates on the same side and cut out accordingly to the largest outline. Again, use lots of lube here to cut through this stuff. And for the tighter angles, go ahead and drill holes through the plate so that you can maneuver the blade into those 90 degree corners. Next we can fit the plate to the gearbox and using the transfer punches, mark out where all the bell housing bolts will go. Then drill those out using the center drill and then working your way up through to the finished sizes. Now I'll be using steel threaded inserts in the plate to give it even more strength and durability. So we'll be drilling up to a finished size of 10.5 millimeters using the drill bit supplied in the insert kit. If you're gonna tap threads straight into the plate, you can use this rule of thumb. 
To determine the drill size for the threaded hole, subtract the thread pitch from the major size to get the size of your drill bit. For example, an M10 by 1.25 bolt is what we want to use. So then we subtract 1.25 from 10 to get a size of 8.75 millimeters. Since we're using steel inserts, we'll drill out to 10.5, then tap those holes to accept our M10 by 1.25 inserts. And we'll do this another eight times till we have all the holes drilled and tapped and inserted. Once we have the gearbox side completely done, we can place the plate on the floor with the engine side up and set the engine down onto the plate, making sure the plate is located on the dowels. Again, we're gonna use the same technique of using the right size transfer punches to make out our holes from behind. If you have blind holes like the top of the bell housing bolts on 2AZ, just put a layer of paint around the holes and when you put the plate down, it will leave a perfect circle template on the plate which you can then center punch and drill out. Remember, these bolt holes can be larger as the load goes through the dowels, right? Right? Now we can go ahead and drill out all these holes. Next, we'll test fit the plate to the engine and then determine which bolts need to be mounted flush and which ones can stay proud. The more bolts you leave proud without having to take more material out of the plate, then the stronger the plate will be overall. So, if it can stay full height, then that's great. Otherwise, you need to shorten the bolt heads to the same height as the depth of the hole you drilled to let the bolt heads mount flush on the plate. The best option is to use countersunk bolts and use the corresponding countersunk drill bit, but a lot of these countersunk bolts don't come in common sizes found on an engine. For example, the 2AZ uses M12 by 1.25 bell housing bolts. The only countersunk bolts that are made in M12 are 1.75 thread. So now we have all of our holes in the plate drilled and tapped, we can go ahead and fit everything up to confirm the correct alignment. So here it is, all bolted up, ready to go. So all that's left to do is to clean up the plate with the flap wheel. I'll just give it a little hit with the, with the wheel here since my die grinder is out of action at the moment. So I'm doing this with a drill and it is absolutely painful. I'll tidy this all up properly on final assembly. So there you have it guys, that's how you mate a TL70 gearbox to an AZ series motor. There are obviously many issues that I haven't covered here like flywheel height, clutch fork and starter clearance, but for now I'll leave it at that and show you how to figure these out once I have the gearbox and engine mounted. That is it guys, I hope you enjoy this episode, thanks for sticking with me over this long break that I've had with my back. If you like what you see today, make sure you hit that like button or consider subscribing so you don't miss out on anything coming up. Bye!